ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار اما بعد so today we'll begin the uh, explanation of sharh al-sunnah or sharh usul al-sunnah which is the explanation of usul al-sunnah of imam ahmad ibn hanbal and of course his treatise famously known as usul al-sunnah with the explanation of sheikh ahmed bin yahya al najmi rahimahullah ta'ala from the major scholars of this era who passed away several years ago rahimahullah ta'ala so today after discussing the introduction and some words uh, several weeks ago when we first began the book and the importance of the sunnah and the titles of many of the books of sunnah and creed and manhaj and aqeedah then we covered approximately three lessons in aspects of the life of this great imam abu abdullah ahmed bin muhammad ibn hanbal rahimahullah so today we enter into the introduction of the sharih and he is Sheikh Ahmed bin Yahya Al-Najmi rahimahullah So he begins by praising Allah alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala ashrafil anbiya'i wal mursalin after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the lord of all existence of all creation and sending the salutations of peace and extolling the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest company of angels and he is the most noble of all of the prophets and all of the messengers then he goes straight into the book itself by mentioning that the aqida or the creed is the foundation of the religion and if there is no creed then there is no religion no aqida no deen meaning that the religion is not given consideration except with the correct aqida so if the aqida or the creed is not correct then the religion will not be right and it will not be straight either it will not be mustaqim it will not be straight and upright except with the correct aqeedah it is for this reason that allah commanded his servants his creation to follow the sirat al mustaqim to follow the straight path and that is the sharia of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which comprises his book and comprises the sunnah of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he also comprises the actions of the sahaba radiyallahu anhum after the passing away of allah's messenger alayhi salatu wassalam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alluded to this in his saying wa anna hadha sirati mustaqiman fattabi'uhu wa la tattabi'u as-subal fattafarraqa bikum an sabilihi wa in allah said and this is my straight path mustaqiman the sirat al mustaqim the straight path so follow it and do not follow the other paths for they will divide you away from his straight path so allah alluded to the path of allah being straight and this is of course also mentioned in a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam where abdullah ibn mas'ud said that allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam drew for us a line and he said hada sabilullah he drew for us a line and he said this is the path of allah 
Then he drew lines to the left and he drew lines to the right. And he said, these are the paths of divergence. And at the head of every path, there is a devil calling to it. So the path to Allah is one. And the path of shaitan or the path of the devil and his army and his followers, then there are many paths. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified to you by way of revelation of the Quran and revelation of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu what that straight path is. So one is not to deviate from it. And that straight path of Allah, that is the Sirat al-Mustaqeem, what is referred to as the straight path. Thereafter, he mentions likewise that Allah stated, in praise of the people of istiqama, meaning the people who are upon the Sirat al Mustaqim, Allah praised them. Those who are firm and steadfast upon the straight path. And Allah clarified what their reward would be when He said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, the meaning of which is, Verily those who say, Our Lord is Allah, then they remain firm and steadfast. It is upon these people whom the angels will descend at the time of their death, saying to them, Do not fear. Do not fear and do not grieve. Rather receive the glad tidings of Jannah, of paradise, which you were promised. Then those angels say to him or to her, Nahnu awliya'ukum fil dunya wa fil akhirah. Those angels, they say, we were your friends and your allies in the life of this world. And we will be so in the hereafter. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَحِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ And in that paradise, therein, you will find whatever your souls desire. And therein, you shall receive whatever you ask for. So when the person is upon guidance, and, the per and a person is upon the straight path, at the time that he dies, those angels come with glad tidings. The angels who come to take the soul. Yes, death is not easy. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La ilaha illallah. Indeed, death has its agony. At the time of death, there is pain. But when the soul is taken and the angels, they come and they take the soul, then the ones who are righteous upon guidance, upon istiqama, those who live their life and they said, our Lord is Allah. And then they were firm, steadfast upon the religion of Allah. Following the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they know that his example is the finest of all examples. We do not need the examples of film stars or people involved in the music industry. They are not our examples. Football players are not our examples. Catwalk models are not our examples. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our example. And the Anbiya and the Rasul who came before him, the Prophets and Messengers who came before him, they are our examples. قَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رُسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have a fine example. For the one who has hope 
in meeting his Lord and in the last day. This is how the believers are. Upon them those angels will descend with ease, tranquility, with comfort, giving them glad tidings. Allah ta'khafu. Saying to them, don't fear, we are not here to harm you. Those angels that descend upon the believers, they say to them, Allah ta'khafu, don't fear. Don't be in terror. Don't grieve because you've left your mother behind or your father behind, your brothers behind, your sisters behind. Don't grieve for them. We'll look after them also. Allah will look after them. And then those angels say to him, or say to those believers, and receive what we are telling you of. And that is the glad tiding of Jannah. This is the difference between the awliya of Allah and the awliya of shaitan. The friends of Allah and the friends of shaitan. The friends of Allah, this is what they receive. And those angels give them further comfort. نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ dunya. We have been your friends in the life of this world. وَفِي akhira. And in the hereafter, we, we, we shall be also your friends. This is the end of the life of the believer. Thereafter, my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, Nuzulan min ghafurin rahim. All of this, Jannah, this paradise, and whatever you wish and whatever you desire, whatever you ask for, you shall get. Then Allah says, Nuzulan min ghafurin rahim. This is for you as an entertainment and an accommodation from the oft forgiving and the most merciful. And He is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likewise warned His Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and warned the ummah. He warned the nation. To whom Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent. All of mankind and jinn. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them. ثم جألناك على شرية من الأمر فاتبعها ولا تتبع أهواء الذين لا يعلمون. إنهم لن يغنوا عنك من الله شيئا. وإن الظالمين بعضهم أولياء بعض. والله ولي المتقين. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the messenger of Allah. And likewise, this is an address to the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then we have placed you, O Prophet, upon a plain way of the Sharia. So follow that. And do not follow the desires of those who have no knowledge. Verily, they cannot avail you in anything against Allah. Can they save you in front of Allah? Those whom you follow and the desires that you follow and the people who decorate the dunya for you. By following them, my brothers and sisters, can they avail you in front of Allah? So Allah informs the Prophet wasallam. Verily they they can avail you not in front of Allah, nothing in front of Allah. Verily the wrongdoers are the friends of one another. But Allah is the friend and the helper of the pious and obedient believers. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these verses, my brothers and my sisters, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns you and he encourages you and he clarifies to you and he explains to you over and over again that you must follow guidance, that you must follow the straight path. Sheikh Ahmed and Najmi rahimahullah, he said that this ayah 
It encompasses or it comprises. And it commands with the following of the Sharia, with the following of the laws of Allah, and warning against following other than that. From those individuals, meaning those individuals who call to other than the Sharia, other than the book and the Sunnah, those who call to other than the straight path of Allah, Allah warns you against them. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he has informed us that those who hold fast to his religion, muttabi'ina li shariatihi, and they are followers of his sharia, meaning the law of Allah, the book of Allah, the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and that they are steadfast, Upon that, أَنَّهُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ Allah, That they are the awliya of Allah. They are the friends of Allah. The allies of Allah. As for the people and the companions who follow other than that path, who are outside of the straight path of Allah, those who abandon that, and they have abandoned the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them with, then they are nothing but friends and allies and helpers to each other. And they have no share in the wilaya or the friendship and the aid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are not from the allies of Allah. They have no share of that. Allah will not give them his, his friendship or his nearness. And this allegiance necessitates, my brothers and sisters, if you want to be from those who are the allies of Allah, the friends of Allah, then that necessitates taking the book of Allah and acting upon the book of Allah because the book of Allah, the Quran, it is the foundation, it is the asal. And likewise to take from the sunnah of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the explanation of the book of Allah. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ And indeed we have revealed to you, O Muhammad, this reminder, the dhikr. So that you may clarify to the people that which has been revealed to them, that which has been sent down to them. So the sunnah clarifies the book of Allah. It explains the book of Allah. And it likewise necessitates taking that which the Prophet ﷺ was upon and what his companions after him were upon. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated, فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ so hold fast, O Prophet, to that which has been revealed to you. For indeed, you are upon a straight path. Is there anything comparable to that, my brothers and sisters? Look at how mankind in our times, Muslims even, how they look everywhere else to find an example a path to follow, following their desires. Whereas here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the Prophet فَاسْتَمْسِكْ بِالَّذِي أُوْهِيَ إِلَيْكَ So cling to that which, has been, that, that which has been revealed to you, O Prophet. So the Prophet has to hold on to revelation. And Allah informed him that you are upon the straight path. And the Prophet and likewise the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of iftiraq warning this ummah from the destruction that fell the nations that came before iftaraqat al-yahud ala ihda wa sab'ina firqa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said indeed the Jews they split up into 71 sects and the Nasara into 72 sects. وَسَتَفْتَرِقُ هَذِهِ الْأُمَّةِ 
على ثلاث وسبعين فرقة and this ummah will divide into 73 sects all of them into the hellfire illa wahida except for one قالوا من هم يا رسول الله they said oh messenger of Allah after he said the Jews into 71 sects the Christians into 72 sects the Muslims into 73 division upon division so now the Sahaba, they want to know all of them into the hellfire, Ya Rasulullah, Kullu Hafin Nari said, all of them, all of those sects will be cast into the hellfire except for one. So now these disciples, these companions of the Prophet وسلم, they want to know who is it? Who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Man hum? Qala humul ladhi, humul ladhina ala mithli ma ana alayhi wa ashabi. They are those who are upon that which I and my companions are upon. The hadith reported by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad, Ibn Majah in Kitab al Fitan, likewise Abu Dawood in Kitab al Sunnah, At Tirmidhi in Kitab al Iman, and others. And the hadith is authentic, walillahi alhamd, that this ummah will divide just as the nations before us divided. So this explains when the Prophet ﷺ drew that line in the sand. And he said, Hada sabilullah, this is the straight path of Allah. And sometimes the people, when you start talking about this straight line, when you start talking about the straight path, when you start talking about the Sirat al Mustaqim, that which you recite in Surah Al Fatiha every single day, every single day that you recite it for those who pray, that this straight path. When you say to them, it is one. It is one path. You see them turning away from you. You quote to them the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and the danger of misguidance. You see them turning away from you. Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, he said, Therefore salvation encompasses those who traverse this path. The one or those individuals who are upon the book of Allah, upon the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and upon the methodology of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That which they were upon after their Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. And those who are upon that path he mentions those who are upon the tariqa, tariqa to Ahlil Athar, that they're upon the path of the people of Athar, meaning the people who follow the narrations. They're concerned with what the Prophet wasallam narrated so they can act upon it. So when the term Ahlul Athar is used, which is one of the names of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, Ahlul Athar, when the term Ahlul Athar, meaning the people of narration, is mentioned, then, the inter then, the then, then what is intended by them is Ashabul Hadith, is the people of Hadith. Why? Because the truth is not known from falsehood. An error is not known from that which is correct, except by way of Hadith. And the actions of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they are not known except by way of hadith, meaning the prophetic tradition. You don't know what is right from that which is wrong, that which is true from that which is false, that which is the actions of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum and what they did. You don't know except by way of hadith. So Ahlul Hadith, the people of hadith, they are the ones who are qa'imun ala al haqq they are the ones who are steadfast and upright and established upon the truth when the people go astray. When the people are going astray, who remains steadfast except people who follow hadith, ahlul hadith. They are the ones who hold fast to the truth when the people abandon it. For this reason, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah ta'ala, whose aqeedah we are studying, he said, In Lam Yakun Ahlul Hadith, Awliya Allah, 
فلا أدري منهم if the people of hadith ahlul hadith they are not the awliya of allah they are not the friends and allies of allah then i do not know who they are that was a statement of imam ahmed ibn hanbal so when the people of hadith those who hold fast to the statements and the actions and the methodology of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his companions when the people of hadith are taken from the earth then you'll find the people taking the ignoramus the ignoramuses as their leaders they take the ignorant ones as their leaders why because ahl hadith protect the dunya with the permission of allah they are the guardians of the earth the people of hadith because when they see those around them falling into error and misguidance and mistakes it is the people of hadith who rectify them they say no this is not how you that is not how you do it this is how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam did this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam commanded this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this is what the sahaba radiyallahu anhum did after he commanded them so ahlul hadith the people of hadith are the guardians of the earth so when they are taken from the earth then the people take the ignorant ones as their leaders and those ignorant misguided ones issue fatwa they issue fatwa without knowledge so they are misguided and they misguide others and the sheikh here rahimahullah ta'ala is alluding to the hadith of, of abdullah ibn umar ibn al-as radiyallahu anhu wa radiyallahu anhu ma hu said that I heard Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say that indeed Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala does not take away knowledge from stripping it from the, by stripping it from the people or snatching it from the people rather Allah takes away knowledge by the death of the scholars such that there does not remain a true scholar upon earth and then the people they take the ignorant ones as their leaders and they go to them asking them questions and they issue them fatwa or they issue them fatwa or rulings and edicts leading themselves astray and leading the people astray in this hadith collected by imam al-bukhari in kitab al-ilm and likewise imam muslim in kitab al-ilm so the hadith is authentic without doubt so when the scholars they begin to die away who guards the earth from amongst mankind they are the guardians ahlul hadith are the guardians of the earth just like the angels are the guardians of the heavens allah appoints them up there and allah appoints ahlul hadith upon the earth so now when you remove that layer of guardianship over the earth protectors who protect the deen of allah then who remains the gateway opens up for the people of misguidance and the people of sin the people of dunya they want to snatch away the youth and send them upon paths of misguidance and innovation and sin and transgression and into kufr and ridda you know into even apostasy and heresy this is why we treasure the scholars of hadith this is why we treasure our ulama and this is why we do not allow them to be reviled and we become angry when our scholars are reviled because you are reviling the guardians of this earth whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed to protect his religion the ulama the warathatul anbiya they are the inheritors of the prophets and the guardians of this dunya they protect by with the permission of Allah you and me from going astray when you insult them and you revile them or you turn your back upon them where will the youth go they will go to their destruction that is why dars after dars week after week we tell you bring your youth to the masjid bring your youth to the durus don't leave them to the streets you are destroying your own children with your own hands 
Bring them. Bring them so they can be guided and be shown guidance. And make dua for them that Allah turns their heart to the truth. Show them who their real examples are. The prophets, the messengers, the sahaba, the imams, the people of sunnah, ahlul hadith. The scholars of hadith, the brave ones of this ummah. Who would not commit shirk if you burnt them alive or if you cut them into pieces. They would still not commit shirk. They're the brave ones. The likes of Imam Ahmed. The likes of, this, of the ulama who came before him and the sahaba who came before them. And the anbiya who came before them. And how many prophets were killed in the path of Allah. They are the ones who are tried. They are the brave ones. They are the courageous ones. They are the ones who hold the banner of truth and they uphold it and they will live for it and they will die for it. That's why we say, bring your families, bring your children, let them sit, show them the straight path. Don't allow them to be wasted on the streets. Keep them next to you. Keep your children close to you more than you keep your wealth hidden away in a bank or hidden away in a safe or hidden away here and there because you don't want anyone to see your wealth because you're afraid that someone might steal it. Your children are more precious than that. Your families are more precious than that. This is why these scholars spend their lives decades and decades and they die upon this. This is Ahmed al Najmi. Rahimahullah ta'ala wrote this treat or explained this treatise in his old age. Why? Because this is their love. To see others guided. That's why Imam Ahmed said what he said. Fa'alaykum ya tullab. He mentions. Fa'alaykum, O students of knowledge. Upon you, O students of knowledge, is to take the path of the people of Hadith. So that you may understand and you may comprehend this religion. So that you can learn the aqeedah sahiha the correct belief in Allah. Because there is nothing more beloved than that. From the worldly sciences, nothing more beloved than knowing Allah. And having belief in Allah, the Lord and creator of the heavens and the earth. The almighty and the all powerful. Whom no one can overcome. He is the king on that day. And he will ask on that day. Where are the tyrants? I am the king today. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are nothing. Except insignificant creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created and shown us mercy. And if you obey him, he will give you eternal life in happiness. Who would turn away from that? Except one who is ignorant or foolish, misguided, uncaring, inattentive and negligent. This aqeedah, my brothers and sisters, that we have been commanded to follow. This aqeedah that Allah is pleased with for his servants, that they follow it. This belief, this creed. So do not deviate from it, neither to the right nor to the left. Remain upon that straight path up until the death comes to you. For indeed, deviating from that straight path is misguidance and it is ruination. It will ruin you, it will destroy you. So ask Allah continually to keep you upon straight guidance. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put that inspiration in your hearts to remain steadfast, that he shows you the truth and guides you to follow it. And he makes clear to you falsehood and he guides you to keep away from it. And that he does not allow falsehood to deceive you and to send you astray. 
This is the Sirat al Mustaqim. This is the straight path of Allah. The path of the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded his servants with. The path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands that you seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah guides you. And you ask for this in every raka'ah of your prayers. In every standing of your prayers, you ask Allah to guide you to the straight path. Since you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't you want it? Do you not seek it, my brothers and sisters? Is there not that yearning in your heart? That I want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide me and to keep me upon guidance and my family and my children up until we meet him. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has obligated upon the tongue of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. The recitation of this first chapter of the Quran in every single unit or raka'ah of the prayer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it a condition for the correctness of the prayer and the validity of the prayer. If you do not ask Allah for guidance in the prayer by reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah will not accept your prayer. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you with something that benefits you. He's commanding you to ask for his guidance. Otherwise your prayer is not valid. So this prayer, my brothers and sisters, encompasses that which follows. When you begin the prayer, meaning when you begin that part of the prayer, Surah Al-Fatiha, you begin by praising Allah, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So you begin by praising Allah, extolling Allah with rightful and deserving praise of Him that is due to Him. All praise is due to Allah, Lord of all creation. Then the, when you recite, you describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the attribute of mercy that is all encompassing and mercy that is specific. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. So you ask Allah Ar Rahman from the names of Allah Ar Rahim. So Allah is the most merciful, meaning that Allah's mercy encompasses everything. Muslim, non-Muslim, munafiq, idol worshipper, Muslim. Everyone receives the all-encompassing mercy of Allah. That's why they drink water. Allah gives them water to drink. That's a mercy from Allah. Even though he worships other than Allah. Allah gives him air to breathe. So he can breathe and live. And that is a mercy from Allah upon him, even though he doesn't worship Allah. Even though he commits sins. Even though he is misguided, Allah is still merciful with him. So that is the encompassing mercy of Allah. And likewise, the mercy of Allah, and that is Ar-Rahman. The name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, that indicates that he is the most merciful upon all of his creation. Ar-Rahim. This is the specific mercy of Allah that Allah has singled out his believing servants with. And Allah is merciful with them, particularly. And he shall be so, Yawm Al-Qiyamah, likewise. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is described with mulk, with dominion and ownership. A dominion and ownership that is not shared with anyone besides him. When you say Maliki Yawmiddin, that he is the owner of the day of recompense, and that is Yawm al Qiyamah. So the one who recites Surah Al Fatiha, he ascribes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ownership of the day of recompense, the day of judgment. Because that day no one has ownership. Even in the apparent sense, no one has ownership except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for this world, then Allah has made in it something of ownership and dominion for his servants. So Allah will give you ownership of your house. Allah will give you ownership over an ounce of silver. Allah will give you ownership over some land. But that is restrictive because the true ownership is his. And Allah owns everything. And in the hereafter, Allah 
is the owner of the day of recompense. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ ثُمَّ مَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا يَوْمُ الدِّينَ يَوْمَ لَا تَمْلِكُ نَفْسٌ لِنَفْسٍ شَيْئًا وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ لِلَّهِ and what will make you know what the day of recompense is, Allah asks. Again, what will make you know what the day of recompense is? It will be the day when no person shall have power to do anything over another. And the decision on that day will be wholly with Allah, completely with Allah. That is the day of recompense, my brothers and sisters, that Allah owns. And only his decision is taken on that day. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, Ya ayyuhal nasu taku rabbakum, wakshaw yawman la yajzi walidun an waladihi, wala mauludun huwa jazin an walidihi shay'ah. O mankind, fear your Lord, and fear a day when no father can avail his son and nor can a son do anything for his father fear that day Allah mentions and commands you Allah wants for you guidance Allah warns you from going astray Allah commands you to obey him because a day will come when everything will disappear except the judgment of Allah you will have no power a father cannot help his son on that day. A son cannot help his father upon that day. Then this surah, Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi, he mentions, then this surah encompasses the affirmation that worship is the sole right of Allah to the exclusion of all others. And that one seeks only his help. And seeking his help is obligatory to the exclusion of other than him. So that's why you say, Only you, O oh Allah, do we worship. And it is only your aid that we seek. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this, and after these, this, these muqaddamat, these introductions, wherein you have praised Allah, you have extolled Allah, you have mentioned Allah, you have mentioned His might and His greatness. And you have affirmed that He is the one that you worship and seek help from. These are all an introduction to what is coming. And that is that what you have said is a cause for what is to come being answered because now you have praised and extolled Allah and mentioned His greatness. And glorified him. And you have affirmed his right of worship. Now. That is a reason for the dua that you are to make. That is, that is to be answered. So after that you ask Allah. And you supplicate to him for guidance. That you ask him. Subhanahu the most perfect. Free from all imperfections. That you recognize the fact that he is the owner and the possessor of guidance. He is the one who guides. And he has the right to misguide for those who deserve it. So that's why you say thereafter, إِهْدِينَ الصِّرَاطَ mustaqim. Allah, guide us to the straight path. You've extolled him, you've praised him, you've mentioned his might and his greatness. You've glorified him. You've mentioned his mercy. You've affirmed that you worship him. This is your humility before Allah. Now you ask him. Now you have the reason for your dua being answered. Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. Then you say, Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim, ghayr al maghdubi alayhim waladdalin. The path, O oh Allah, put us upon the path of those whom you have bestowed your bounty. And not on the path of those who have earned your anger. 
nor those who went astray. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is angry with a group. And they are the Jews. And Allah sent a group astray. And they are the Christians. So Allah is now saying, or that now you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide you to the straight path. Not those that Allah is angry with, nor those whom Allah has sent astray. Keep us upon that middle path behind the prophets and the messengers. So in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gathered all goodness. And it was for this reason that Allah commanded that it be recited in every single raka'ah upon the tongue of Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He commanded you to recite it. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam informed us that there is no prayer for the one who did not recite these words. And these words are all beneficial to you. They will aid you and they will help you in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you are glorifying him, thanking him, extolling him, praising him. And you are asking him to guide you and not to misguide you and not to become angry with you. All of this is encompassed in this one surah, Surah Al-Fatiha. Such that the Prophet Sallallahu said that whomsoever does not recite it, there is no prayer for him. As occurs in the hadith from Ubadah ibn Samit, that Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that there is no prayer for the one who does not recite Fatiha Al-Kitab, the opening chapter of the book, reported by Bukhari in Kitab Al-Salah. And likewise, in Mus by Imam Muslim in Kitab al-Salah, likewise. This is the deen of Allah, my brothers and sisters. Inshallah, next week, we'll finish off the final part of the introduction to Usul sunnah And uh, then we can begin the first point that Shaykh al-Allama Ahmed bin Yahya al-Najmi, rahimahullah, begins with. Jazakumullah khairan for your patience today. And inshallah, we shall proceed and continue next week. Jazakumullah khairan. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله